regard, considering the subject of wisdom, since this section from verses 13 through 18 speaks about two kinds of wisdom. The wisdom that comes from above, the, the wisdom that comes from God, and the wisdom that is from here, the wisdom that is earthly, the wisdom that is unspiritual, that comes from our flesh, our sinful nature, and this, the wisdom that comes all the way back to Satan, the author of sin and the author of deceit, the author of this destruction and everything that has to do with the truth. So, you know, we have to be careful. What kind of wisdom do I have? Because depending on the kind of wisdom that you have, that's the kind of life you're going to have because you're going to be making decisions according to your wisdom. And especially the youth. You see, the youth right now, when do you think that you make the most important decisions in life? When you are mature or when you're young? When you're young. You make decisions about your career. You make decisions about dating. You make decisions about getting married. You get, make decisions. All kinds of important decisions for life ahead. And not having wisdom to really make those decisions. Just because your wisdom was from your flesh, from this earth, from this system, the world. So when, when it feels good, you're going to decide about the, according to your emotions, according to your feelings, according to your dreams. Is that what you're going to do? Or are you going to really follow God's wisdom and live the kind of life that God has prepared for you if you only obey Him? So it's going to be up to us which wisdom. So let's start reading James 3, verse 13. Do you have it there open? Your Bible's page is, it reads like this, reading from the NIV. Who is wise and understanding among you? Okay, next week, you're going to answer that question. <coughs> Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find this order and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap the harvest of righteousness. Okay? So, we uh, were considering last week, last Sunday, the difference between uh, between wisdom and knowledge, right? And uh, so we know that knowledge is important in order to have uh, wisdom, but not any knowledge. It has to be the right kind of knowledge, the knowledge of the truth. And especially we're focusing on the truth of God because we want to have godly wisdom. So we're going to need the truth from God. Okay. So our problem is not accumulating facts. Okay. Because we have facts all over. Okay. Like I was sharing with you, we have all kinds of information available just there in your phone. Just there in your phone, you have the whole world at your disposal of information in any language that you want, or that you know you can have all that information. So the problem for with us is not about facts, okay? It's not about knowing what is truth, okay? Because it's there. Of course, we know that because there is all kinds of information in the internet, books, uh, everywhere in your computer, you know, not everything is according to the truth of God, 
but we have a lot of information. And uh, the, our problem, the main problem that we have in Christianity is, is lack of wisdom. Okay? And you know, last week, we learned about what godly wisdom is all about, what false wisdom is all about. So we're talking about that kind of wisdom, godly wisdom. We're not able to take the facts we have learned from the scriptures and put it into practice in real life situations at points of need. Okay? At points of need. Because I have seen it. I have seen it when I'm advising uh, people that they know they have the right information. They're not ignorant. But they just don't put it together so that they can see, okay, so this is the, the way that I should live. This is the way that I have to handle this situation because this is what the Bible says. Because I already know. I have heard that many, many times. And sometimes I have noticed when I'm advising somebody, I say, oh, yeah. Say, oh, yeah. I knew that, but I just never put it together in a practical way. And that's what God's wisdom gives us, that ability, that power, that vision to put one plus one is two, not one plus one equals one. No, no, it plus equals two. You have to see it clearly. And that's what God is offering to us freely, the Bible says in James chapter 1, freely and in abundance if we only really desire to have wisdom. Last week I was sharing with you how for the, for the Hebrews it was the number one priority for them. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. That's why they had a complete set of books, the books of wisdom that we have in the Bible. Okay? Just a complete, all the book of the Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, all wisdom, all the sayings of the wise men. So wisdom was key for them. And that's why even Solomon, that's what, why he asked, when God asked him, what do you want? I know you're ahead of you. You have a, a great responsibility to be the king of the number one country in the world. What do you want? Ask whatever you want and I will give it to you. And he said, I, I want wisdom. So that should be our desire every day, every day. Lord, please give me wisdom. Let me see life from your perspective, not from my perspective, not from the perspective of this world, not from the perspective of my flesh, not from the perspective of Satan that is behind all error and all distortion. So help me, Lord. Is that your prayer? Do you really want to grow in wisdom, a godly wisdom? Or you just want to go, you know, just pretending that you're that you're a good Christian, that you're wise, that you're spiritual, just because you're involved here, involved there, blah, blah, blah. but in reality you're lacking it within you. That's important to be a reality within you, okay? Not just pretending outside. That's why, why God is so focused on transforming our character, our heart, our mind. Because the Christian life begins within us, not outside with activities, with involvement. It is within us, the real Christian life. You remember? The Bible tells us, Jesus told us that one day we're going to be in His presence and we're going to say, Lord, I did this and I was involved in this and I was involved in that. So, Lord, you know that I was a good Christian. He said, I never knew you. Depart from me. I never knew you. I know you were involved in all kinds of religious activities. And it was just the religious activities, but I don't know you. You see, that is got to be something real within you. Not just Christian activity, not just pretending. Okay? That's why, notice verse 13. What does it say, verse 13? Who is wise and understanding among you? So before they could answer, he told them, look, I'm going to give you a hint so that you can answer. Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done 
in the humility that comes from wisdom. So he's talking about, hey, you're going to have to really show it with your fruits that you are really wise with a godly wisdom. Okay? And that's why James recognized that if we are ever to put our faith into action, because remember that's one of the, the main things that, that James is writing about. He's telling us, look, you have to show that you have the, the true faith, living faith, not the dead kind of faith, not the demonic kind of faith, but the dynamic kind of faith by really listening to the Word of God and putting it into action. Okay? And James is telling us here that if we ever to put our faith into action through good words and good works, we're going to need wisdom. Okay? If we don't have wisdom, forget it. Okay? We're just going to have religious activity. We're not, we're not going to have spiritual works done because of the leading of the Holy Spirit, because the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, our words are not going to be by the Holy Spirit according to the Word of God for edification. Our words are going to be just whatever is needed to manipulate situations and to do things that I want and to, and to reach the goals that I want and all that. That's human wisdom unspiritual wisdom, demonic wisdom, and, and that's what we're, we're, we're going to be looking here. Okay? Because in this passage, James is comparing true wisdom and false wisdom in three different aspects. We covered the first one last week, origins, where these two wisdom come from. One comes from above, the other one comes from down here. Okay? And now today we're going we're gonna to cover half of in operation, okay? In operation, they operate in different ways. They don't operate the same way, okay? And then we're going to finish with the outcomes, the results of one wisdom and the result of the other kind of wisdom. So last week we went verses 15 and part of 17, first part, we, we covered the contrast in origins, okay? So now, let's look at the contrast, okay? He's comparing these two kinds of wisdom, and now he's going to compare them in the way they operate, the way they, they function, that is different, okay? It's different, so, we're gonna, we're gonna begin with looking at the earthly, okay? the unspiritual, the demonic kind of wisdom. Okay? We're going to see how this wisdom operates. Okay? And uh, that's important for us because you know that all of us, we struggle with our flesh, right? All of us struggle with our flesh. It's a constant struggle. Every day, every minute, we're constantly struggling with our flesh. And now we know who is appealing to our flesh? Who's appealing to our flesh? The world system. And we know who is creating and shaping the world system? Satan. That's why James is telling us that that kind of wisdom that comes from us, from, that is unspiritual, that is from the flesh, in reality comes from the world, and finally from Satan. So I know it's difficult for us to accept that maybe I have the wisdom that comes from Satan. It's difficult for us. It's easier for us to say, yeah, it's for myself. But James is telling us the truth. He's telling us, yeah, but it's not only from yourself. You have to understand who's deceiving you. This system is deceiving you. And this system, is, who is behind the system is Satan. So, in the final analysis, you are Satan's puppet. And in reality, at the end, you're just doing his will. That's the way he's working. So that you can do his will and not God's will. 
You see why it's so important this passage for us to truly understand the difference of operation, how they operate. Okay? And if you notice, verse 13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. Okay? It says, But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. So the very first thing that we see about the evidence of false wisdom is that it operates in bitter envy. Okay, other other versions, it says jealousy. Which is the same thing, it's just the translation changes. According to the translators, they consider that this word has more the idea of the jealousy. Others know it has more the idea of bitter envy, but both are the same thing. Okay, we have bitter envy, we have jealousy. Okay, so it works that way. It says, but if you harbor, or you hold, or you have bitter envy, jealousy, and the idea of a harbor is something that is settled in you. It's already settled there. Okay? That bitterness that is leading you to be jealous, to be envy, is already settled in your in your character. Okay? It's there. Like a ship in a harbor, it's already settled there, secure there. In this case, it's secure for the bad. Okay? We have this kind of a attitude, this kind of a feeling, this kind of actions, bitter envy. Okay? Now, let me show you the, the meaning of this word. Okay? The meaning of this word okay? is to keep typically uh, it's, let me read it without without the uh, parenthesis first it says to keep a to keep in one's mind uh, especially if you don't know let's read it all, all the way because in reality uh, it's only giving us the different ways to see it to keep a thought or a feeling, typically a negative one, in one's mind, especially secretly. Okay? Secretly, when you're not letting people know of your envy, of your jealousy, that kind of bitterness. Sometimes you can, we can more or less tell it all. But it's to keep a thought or a feeling, typically a negative one, in one's mind, especially secretly. Okay? Secretly. Now, another definition that we can find in the Bible dictionary is a harsh, resentful attitude toward others. Okay? A rash, resentful attitude towards others others. Maybe you have experienced that personally by you having that kind of attitude or by somebody having that kind of attitude towards you. I know that we all have seen that or experienced that. That's what it means that, that James is saying, saying look, when you allow this type of uh, condition, spiritual condition in your life, that is leading you to think and to feel and to act in this way, that's not God's wisdom. You're not allowing God's wisdom to rule your life. This kind of behavior, these kinds of feelings, that kinds of thoughts are from your flesh, are unspiritual. It's the way that the world sees us normal. Why? Why is not approved by God? Because in reality it comes from Satan. It comes from Satan. So don't go that way. But you know, it is easy for
for us to accept this kind of feelings, this kind of thoughts, these kinds of attitudes and actions, because we see it as it's normal. Yeah, it's normal for the flesh. But according to the Bible, if you are a real Christian, now the flesh is not your master. Now is the Holy Spirit your master. So the Holy Spirit is not approving of that. God is not approving of that. Your Savior, Jesus Christ, is not approving of that. So we shouldn't approve that just because it feels normal. And it looks normal. Yeah. But for the other kind of wisdom, it's normal. But not for godly wisdom. Godly wisdom is not normal. Look, another definition. Okay? We're looking at uh, bitter envy, jealousy, the, the way that James is describing this kind of false wisdom, this pleasure for someone else's success. Have you ever experienced that? That you hear the, the success of somebody, and maybe with where you say, oh, that's good, but inside of you it's like, oh, it hurts. Hmm. I was not expecting that. I wanted something different. Have you ever experienced that? Because I cannot ask you, have you ever seen somebody know? Because we don't know when others are experiencing that. But we know when we experience that. When I experience that, we know that. Have you ever experienced that? See, that reaction, that thought, is not according to God's wisdom. That shows that I'm not operating in God's wisdom, that I'm operating in the flesh. Therefore, my reactions, my attitudes, and probably my words and my actions are not wise in the eyes of God. And we know we say that, we tell people, hey, that, that was not wise, but you did. So when we say that as Christians, it's because we're, we know the difference between what is approved by God and what's not approved by God, right? So that's what James is telling us. Look, this is not approved by God. This time, this kind of feeling, these kinds of uh, attitudes and actions are not approved by God. This pleasure for someone else's success. Remember in the Bible, who were the very first characters in the Bible that show that kind of jealousy, okay, that kind of bitter envy. Remember? Cain. Because Abel's offering was acceptable to the Lord. He was jealous. And what happened? What did he say? Oh, brother, congratulations. Your your offering was acceptable before the Lord and mine was not acceptable. I need to change. So, you know, thank you for giving me this great spiritual lesson that I learned. And from now on, I'm going to do it the right way. Was that his uh, reaction? No, that was not his reaction. He said, no, you are my enemy. You're going to get it. Okay? I don't like you. I don't like you. So when you don't like a person just because that person is right, is that, uh, is that godly wisdom? That kind of feeling? That kind of emotion? That kind of thought? Is that godly wisdom? Or the earthly and spiritual and demonic wisdom? So that that's what exactly James is saying. And he's still like, look, you have to make sure that you really operate with godly wisdom, if not, your life is not going to be what it's supposed to be according to God's plan, according to God's will for your life. Because, you know, God's will, God's plan for our life, in general, he says, I want you to have abundant life. Sometimes we say, what's that, abundant life, a lot of money? No, no, he's talking about Godly life, having godly wisdom, having everything that comes from the Bible, all 
all the spiritual blessings that we can find in, in uh, Ephesians. Just think about Ephesians, because we're going through Ephesians in Koitos. Just think about all the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. Now he's telling us, I want you to know that, be aware, and enjoy and use those spiritual blessings that you have in Christ. And you're going to be operating in godly wisdom. But if you just read the Bible and just forget about what you read, like James told us in the first chapter, that you just, it's like looking at yourself in a mirror and then you see something that you don't like about yourself, you put it down, you go and you forget about what you saw. The same thing that can happen with the Word of God. That we can see in the Word of God what we are supposed to do, how, the way that I'm supposed to be, the kind of person that God wants me to be, the kind of character. But then I, I said, oh, okay, yeah, no, I can see that I'm, I'm failing in this and that, but then I go away and I forget about it. I don't work on that, I don't repent about that, I don't really do spiritual battle to overcome that, but I just uh, forget about that. Okay, so that's what happened. Cain and Abel, another example, Joseph and his brothers. Were they jealous about Joseph? And they bless Joseph? Oh, they wanted to kill him, okay? They wanted to kill him, and that's, to that point, jealousy can go to that point of really wanting to hurt people. To really hurt people. Have you ever feel that you want to hurt somebody? In what way? In some way? You say, well, uh, some way, but... And usually, they try to hurt people in a way that uh, I'm not going to look bad, but at the same time, I'm behind hurting. Why? Because that's the way it is. Uh, we're going to look at why. But Joseph and his brothers, the apostles, remember that part where the Bible said that they argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. So they were jealous among them. They said, oh, no, no, it's not going to be John. No, it's not going to be me, James, and I, because I did. And they were arguing. Who was going to be the greatest? Who was going to be the vice president? Oh, we know Jesus is going to be the president, but who's going to be the vice president? I'm going to be the, no, you're not here. And they were arguing. Because there were jealousy among them. The way the Bible says here, but if you harbor bitter envy, if you harbor bitter envy, this kind of jealousy, then you're not going to react with wisdom, with godly wisdom. Of course not. Let me show you this verse in the, the voice translation. It says, if your heart is one that bleeds, Dark streams of jealous envy. Do not be so proud that you ignore you are depraved, your, your depraved state. Okay? Do not be so proud that you ignore your depraved state. That means it's telling you, look, you can be so proud that you don't even notice that you're operating in that kind of unspiritual wisdom. That kind of worldly wisdom, that kind of demonic wisdom that you don't even notice it because you're so proud, you're always so right, everything that you're doing is correct. It's the other people that are wrong, I'm right. And that's what James is telling us and warning us, say, be careful. We have that power to deceive ourselves, and pride is especially powerful to do that to help us deceive ourselves. So that's why James is really warning us about being careful with our attitudes, our actions, because everything that James is mentioning here comes 
from, from our mind, our feelings, our emotions, our thoughts, and sometimes our actions, sometimes not our actions, but for sure it is within us, okay? It's within us. Now, um, it also says, here it's talking about selfish ambition or strife. King James and other older versions use the word strife. Or modern versions use selfish ambition. It says, if you harbor or hold selfish ambition, strife, the same thing, right? That's already settled in your character. You see, that, that's why it's so important for us to be honest with ourselves because if that's my case, I'm going to have to really work on that because that kind of mentality, that kind of uh, natural reaction is already, it has already harbored in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, in my character. So now I need to really work on removing that. Is that easy? It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be impossible. It is possible because we can do all things through Christ, but only through Christ. And it's going to take really work. It's not just to listen to one message and then to feel bad and say, oh yeah, I'm fighting and did that, and go out and do nothing about it. That's what James already warned us in the first chapter, and this is what he continues to, to talk about. Hey, do something about it. Okay? Do something about it. Don't just listen. Don't just learn and learn and learn, and then you don't put it into practice. Put it into practice. So, what is the meaning of selfish ambition? What is the meaning of strife? That word in the original, what is the meaning? Okay? Because we only have translations. Okay. The meaning, he says, it refers to self-seeking that causes opposition and division. Okay, that's why it is translated that way of self-ambition, strife, because you have self-ambition, you want opposition, you want something, okay? And in the process, you don't care. You don't care if you create opposition and division. You don't care. Because what you care is what you want. Your goal is number one. Not God's will. No, no, your will, your desire, what you see is the right thing. But in a deceitful way, you think that it's the right thing. That's why, notice the original, how it was used in the in, in biblical times, and also the Greeks use it. The Greek word came to describe anyone who entered politics for selfish reasons and sought to achieve his agenda at any cost, even if that meant trampling on others. Do we see that in churches? Yeah. I've been around a long time to see that, that is a reality. It's a reality. People come and come and they seem to really care about the work of God, but in reality they have their own agenda. It's not God's agenda. It, it appears to be God's agenda, but in reality it's not God's agenda. It's their own agenda, what they want to accomplish. It's not what really God wants to accomplish. And, and then they do that. They do that. They, they work and, and they work hard and hard and hard to achieve, achieve their agenda, agenda that they don't care. If they're on their way, they are making destruction, destroying people, relationships, and even a church they can destroy. They don't care because what I really care is about reaching my agenda, my goal. That's all I care. That's what is important to me. And, and it's only seed for this situation. That's why James is, is warning us that we might even think that I'm doing God's will. I'm doing God's, God's will. Remember Paul, when, when he was Saul of Tarsus? When he was 
opposing the church, when he's persecuting the church, what, does, what did he say in his testimony? That he thought he was doing God's will. He thought he was doing God's will. But he was wrong. He was operating under the wisdom of his flesh, the system that opposed Christianity, and who was behind that? Satan. So you see, it can happen to us. We can see the life of Paul and learn, but then, you see, godly wisdom means that now I'm going to relate it to me in my life. I'm going to relate it. I'm going to be able to see the relationship between the life of Paul and my life. I'm not just going to stop in learning and say, wow, he was really mistaken thinking that he was doing God's will when he was against the Lord. Huh. He was an idiot. What about you? What about me? What about me? That's the important thing when we go through the Bible to allow the Holy Spirit to apply it to me that I can have God's wisdom and see that. Okay? So, another Another aspect on the meaning of these words that James is using by selfish ambition, strife. Let me show you another aspect. It means plotting, that means planning, scheming, conspire with a strategy, conniving, sly, unpredictable, untrustworthy, using any means necessary to gain the end result. Okay? I have an end result and this is the way that I'm going to be working. Okay? Plotting, scheming, conniving. I'm going to be planning exactly my movements, the way that I'm going to do things. Okay? I mean, and it's going to be unpredictable. They're not going to even know when choom, I'm going to attack, when the final blow is going to come, but the final blow is going to come because I'm going to I have to reach my goal. I have seen it. I have seen it time and time and time again here in the church. And we have to be very careful not to be the next ones to behave with this kind of ungodly wisdom that is not from God. Of course, they're going to make sure that people think that it is from God. But it's not from God. That's what James is telling us to do. I want you to have wisdom and see. So that you can have discernment. And be able to discern the truth from, from error. Because look, about selfish ambition, about strife, look what Paul told the Philippians. Chapter 2, verse 3 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or vain conceit to make a good impression on others. Okay? Because that's the main goal, to make a good impression on others. But with real humility okay, of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. Okay? When you consider yourself more important than anybody else, then you're going to behave in that way. Like my agenda is number one. And I'm going to achieve my agenda. It doesn't matter if I have to step all over people, step all over a church, a family. So we have to be careful. That's the way it operates. That's, that's the way that James is warning us, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, it says, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Okay? It's the, do not boast about it. Don't say, I'm right, and I know I'm right. Or deny the truth. Don't say, no, I'm not wrong. It's telling both things. Because that's common. A person is going to defend going to defend what is undefensible. You're not supposed to defend what you know it's wrong. 
but that's DC. We are DC and we DC ourselves. Okay. Now, number three. Okay, it's there. It says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. It's boasting. Okay? It operates with boasting. That means with proud, pride, attitude of pride, arrogant, bragging, braggadocious. Okay? That's why it says here. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it. Okay? So it's giving us more characteristics on the way this wisdom, false wisdom operates. It operates with that. With pride, with arrogance, with bragging, boasting. That's the way it operates. Right? And, and we know that pride loves to boast. And nothing is prouder than the wisdom of men. Okay? Nothing is prouder than the wisdom of men. Because, see, the wisdom of God is not going to lead you to boasting and to be proud of you. It's going to make you humble. That's what we're going to see next week. It's going to make you humble. You're going to be humble. You're going to be submissive. You're going to be like it. We're going to see that next, or not, maybe not next week, but in two weeks more, when we see the, uh, the outcome of both. Okay? But right now, we're looking at the characteristics of this wisdom that, that comes from Satan, the world, and then the, our flesh. That's the way it is. We have to be careful because, you see, there's a way to report God's blessing, okay, so that God gets the glory, okay, but also what is the difference? But there's also a manner that gives the praise to men, right? Sometimes, have you ever noticed that somebody is, like, giving a testimony, but in reality the testimony is so that all the praise and glory goes to the person? Have you ever noticed sometimes? Because you see, it's easier for us to notice the faults of other people than our own faults. Good. We can see that ah, you just stole, you just took away God's glory and gave it to yourself. You're really trying to bring so like I was asking. I was asking about a uh, a speaker. Okay, what do you know about this speaker? Because that speaker was one wanted us to, to participate and go to to this activity and all that. And so I always try to find out about that speaker, his position, his character, all that. And tell me to do. Don't need to know. Don't waste your time. That person, all his measures, no Bible, it's all about that, about him, about her. I don't want to say exactly what, but it's about, it's about me. Everything, it's going to speak about an hour, okay, and it's all going to be about me, 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 me. So don't even waste your time. Thank you. Thank you for the report. And then another person told me the same thing. Oh, so you want to see, you want to go and see that person praise and glorify himself or herself? No. We don't need that. We already struggle with that. And to have somebody promoted, no, we don't need that. We need somebody to condemn that. Like James is doing it here. He's condemning that kind of attitude, that kind of uh, 
mentality, and he's telling us that's not from God. The person that behaves that way is not behaving with godly wisdom. He's behaving with the wisdom that is from here, from earth. Unspiritual, from the devil, is not from God. Okay? A practice, also the, the idea of boasting, of being proud, arrogant, bread, a practice of comparing yourself with others and or criticizing others. That's another way that the dictionary sees the meaning of this word in the original. Like, this is the practical aspects of this word. When you're comparing yourself with others, okay? When you're criticizing others. You criticize others because you want to look yourself even better. Okay? You want to, it's, it's a way of bragging about you. Look at that person. Look what he did. Look what he said. In reality, you're bragging like, I am better. That person is really bad. I'm better. I'm good. Okay? When in reality, the Bible says that if we have that inclination to be comparing ourselves with others, just compare yourself with Jesus, that's all. That's all. Forget about comparing yourself with other person here in the church or from another family member or compare yourself with Jesus. Are you gonna pass the test? So forget it. Don't do that. Okay? And that's what it is. It's saying. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it. Okay? Don't boast about it. Okay? Don't do that. That's not from God. And then it also says, don't boast about it or deny the truth. Okay? Deny, which is like the King James says, don't lie. Deny the truth. That's the way it operates, this kind of wisdom. James is telling us. Okay? So if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not also butter or deny the truth. Okay? So let's just finish looking at the sequence because if you notice, James is giving you a sequence in sequence. It's like a shame that, that has a reaction. One is going to produce the other, and the other is going to produce the other, and it's a reaction, a shame reaction. That's why we have to be careful not to start that kind of chain reaction because it's gonna it's gonna it's going to work. Okay? Look, first there is bitter envy that produces selfish ambition, that causes opposition and division, and in order to win, we must resort to boasting, and boasting usually involves lies. So you want that kind of a wisdom? You want to operate? I'm pretty sure you're going to reach your goal. You're going to end up doing what you want to do. Your goal is going to be done. I have seen it here in the church. Finally, they reach their goal, hurt the church, harm the church in one way. Do you think that's the wisdom of God? That's not the wisdom of God. Even though they can, they can give all kinds of explanations and reasons for doing that, that's not God's will. It's not God's will. But in reality, that's what happened. With this kind of wisdom, that is not from above, it's not from God, it's not spiritual, it's not by the Spirit of God, but on the contrary, it is by the flesh, According to the system of this world, it's okay. And we know that behind that system is Satan. So in the final analysis, in reality, we are accomplishing Satan's goals when we follow this wisdom. Accomplishing Satan's goals. Do you want to do that? I'm pretty sure you don't want to do that. That's why you're here, right? You want to do God's will. You want to learn more, you want to grow in the knowledge of the truth, and you want to grow in the grace of God. That means living according to that truth.
truth, God's truth, you want to live according to that truth? Is that the reason why you're here? Or just because it helps you keep just, you know, a facade that, yeah, I'm a good Christian, I'm a spiritual Christian, I come to church, I get involved, I that. Is that the reason? Careful, because you're going to end up using this system. Okay? You're going to end up doing that system. That system is not from the Lord. Remember, it's not from the Lord. That's what James is telling us. Who is wise and understanding among you? And then he goes to the practical aspect. Let him show it by their good life. Let him show it by their good life. By the good life, the meaning of good in the Bible is godly life. Show it by your godly life. A life that is led by God, by His Word, by His Spirit. Show it that way that you're wise. But if you don't see that in your life, that means that you're not wise. Spiritually, godly wisdom, you don't have that. I'm pretty sure that all of us, we want that kind of wisdom, the godly wisdom. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for knowing you, Lord, and for knowing the things that you are teaching us, Lord, through your word. Lord, help us not to stop right here in the learning process. Lord, convince us that we have to put it into practice, and especially if we notice, if we acknowledge that we are failing you, Lord. We are failing you. We thank you because we know that you're speaking to each and every one of us. And the way that you're showing us what we need to change might be different for each of us, but Lord, help us to be honest. Help us to truly repent, to confess our sins, knowing that you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lead us, Lord, to do whatever is necessary to be in right relationship with you. Whatever we need to do with our neighbor, in our relationships with our neighbor, with our brothers and sisters in the church, with family members, with friends outside the church, at work, in school, anywhere, that we need to do something that is according to your wisdom, Lord. Help us, Lord, because we don't want to continue operating in this destructive kind of wisdom that the world approves and practice. We want to be different. We want people to see the real difference that you can make in the life of a sinner that has repented and that is following you in obedience. We ask it, we pray it, for your honor and glory only, and in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. The Lord's day with your family.